Most things you do, if you want to do it well, you have to do it with a heart of service. Let me give you three examples. Number one, business. Business is service. What do you think, Pastor? Duffy? Business is service. I thought business is money. No, 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 no. The result of business is money. It's your bottom line. But before business is money, business is first and foremost service. Let me give you an example. One day I went to Chick-fil-A. I was going to work. I went to Chick-fil-A. And I was, um, I, was going, I was running late. I forgot my wallet. And so I went to Chick-fil-A, you know, like having the, the value customer service, right? You're not going to find a company, a seafood company, with the, the amount of customer service that Chick-fil-A has. You're not going to find it. And so I, I lost my, uh, I left my wallet. And so I said, you know what? I don't have any money. I'm sorry. I need to go and I'm about to go. And so I said, just forget about my order. And then the lady looks at me. She says, it's okay, sir, don't worry. This one is on us. You don't need to pay me, just go. That day, Chick-fil-A gained a lifetime customer. Because to me, I didn't feel like they were just after my money. I felt like I was being served. And so people get it wrong. People who are in the business world, they worry so much about the money. How much you gonna pay me? I want the money. I'm gonna charge you a thousand. I'm gonna charge you for two thousand. They forget it. That is not about the money. It's about serving. If you serve it well, the money will come. And so they come, and then people, and then you know these people with the psychics, they're so money hungry. And then it's all about the money. Sometimes the job's not even well done. Meanwhile, you don't realize if you were to just take care of that person and serve them. The money is going to be a byproduct of your service. Ask those billionaires, Jeff Bezos, um, Elon Musk. Bezos, he started Amazon. His goal was to create a platform for people to buy books. All he wanted to do was to serve others. Um, there's no platform, I'm a, I'm a book reader, and there's no platform for me to purchase a book. So I'm going I'm to create a platform where people can read books. That's it. It was simple. But his, his mindset is, I need to serve the people. And then we all know Amazon has, I mean, it's taken a lot of its own now. It's a billion dollar company. It's about to be a trillion dollar company. But it started with the desire of a man to serve those who can serve themselves. We worry so much about the money. We worry so much about the bottom line. We forget about service. And this is why I love Chick-fil-A. Because when you go to Chick-fil-A, you know that these people care about you. It's not so much about the money. Now, if you go to these other places, I'm not going to mention any names. If you don't have that money, listen, you ain't getting money. <laughs> no money, no honey, right? That's what they say. If you don't have that money, you walking out of there hungry. But I, but I, I feel like the Lord allowed me to experience Chick-fil-A because it's about serving taking care of the needs of the people in front of you. And the rest, the money will come. Don't be so focused on the money. So business is service. Number two, marriage is service. Those of you who are married, marriage is a commitment for a man and a woman to serve each other until they die. That's what truly marriage is. So if you're in a marriage, you're not willing to serve other, the marriage may not work. A lot of people say, growing up, I heard people say, you know what, it's funny, it's the wife's mission to serve the husband only. Without realizing that they both have responsibility towards each other. It's not just one person putting in all the work and sacrificing. It's not just one person that's committed. Marriage is service. I've only been married for seven years, but let me tell you, after seven years of being married, marriage is service. If she's not willing to serve me, it's not going to work. If I'm not willing to serve her, it's not going to work. Marriage is service. If you're here thinking of getting married and you're not willing to serve, don't get married. Marriage is sacrifice 
being willing to sacrifice yourself in order to serve the next person. It's not easy. It's not easy. So he said business is service. Marriage is service. Number three, ministry is service. How do I find my calling? 
Um, I see people uh, in their calling, I, you know, how do I find my calling? Your calling, God will reveal it to you. But there's one thing that every Christian is called to do. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, he projected for me. If you're confused about your calling, start here. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for what? For good works, which he prepared before him so that we may walk in them. <laughs> we were created, each and every one of us, and if you are in Christ, you were created for good works. In other words, you were created to serve him. So if you're confused about your calling, I don't know if God has called me to worship or God has called me to preach, if he has called me to be in marketing, I don't know what he has called me to do. Start by serving. There was a time at my previous church, I was maybe about 20 years old, um, and there was a young, there was, a, there was an old couple there. And at this time, I didn't know nothing about service. All I knew was God led to do something in my life, and I saw this older couple, and I just started to give them rides. Um, when they would need, uh, when they would need groceries, I would just, uh, you, know, you know, give them groceries. I would just serve this elderly, elderly couple. So if you're confused about your calling, that's a good place to start. Created for good works in Christ Jesus. Is that the right, church? So the last thing I want to share with you is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Before leaving, he needed a way to make sure that the disciples really understood this thing called service. How do I make sure that they understand that the way to the kingdom, to be effective in the kingdom is service? How do I make sure that they understand this? He had options. He could have used a sword. He could have used war weapons. He could have used guns. He could have used chariots. He could have used a lot of things to make sure that before he leaves, he imparts service in his disciples. He didn't choose none of those things. You know what he chose? He chose a towel and a budget. When you read John chapter 13, after he has communion with them, John chapter 13, everybody has their Bible? This is a church, who believes in the Bible, the Word of God? Pull out your Bible if you have it. John 13. Verse 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things to him in his hands, and that he had come forth from God, was going back to God. Verse 4, he got up from supper, laid aside his garments, taking a towel, girded himself. Then he poured water in the basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with the towel, which he was created. Verse 6, so he came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered to him, what, what I do to you, you, realize, you don't realize now, but you will understand after. Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered, if I do not wash your feet, you have no part with me. Peter Simon said, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Instead of using nuclear weapons, instead of using swords, he used two things. He says, I'm going to gird my waist. Look, it wasn't the owner of the house. 
that we watch TV, but in that time, in that society, it was the servant or the slave of the house who would come to wash the person's foot. Now, can you understand in Peter's mind, Jesus, the King of Kings, the Messiah, is stooping down, putting himself in the position of a slave to wash the foot of a little sinner like me, like Peter. It was unfathomable unfathom to, to Peter, unthinkable that the Savior of the world washed my feet. So he said, don't do it. I'm not, I'm not worthy for God to wash my feet. You don't have to stoop down that low. I get it, I get it. You don't have to come down that low. You don't have to wash my feet. You don't have to put yourself in the position of a slave to wash my feet. And Jesus says, if you don't let me wash your feet, you can't go into this kingdom with me. Because the position, oh Lord, the position, the position, the position of a kingdom person is just like this. With a towel and a bucket. That's the position of a servant in the kingdom. It is not in a Rolls Royce. It is not in a penthouse. It is not having 15 people taking care of your needs. This is the position of a servant of the kingdom of God. Yes. That's the position. And that's what I want to instill in Christ in the church. When we say that we are servant leaders, everyone who comes to ministry in this church will understand one thing, that there are no superstars, that there are only servants here. Starting from me. So when we go out Saturday or on, on Saturday or Sunday, I'm gonna be serving the only just like everyone else. The position of a true servant is on his knees, towel around his waist, bucket in front of him, taking care of God's people. And Jesus said, if the Son of Man can do it, then how much more so can you? He led by example. Yes. He showed them what it's like before he was releasing them. So this is why after releasing them, you didn't see them fight, you didn't see them take a position, you didn't see them walking around, and you, don't see, you didn't see them acting as kings. You saw servants. Paul was a servant. Matthew was a servant. John was a servant. James was a servant. Peter was a servant. They all were servants to the point that they were willing to die just like he died. He imparted service with, to them by showing them what a true servant is like. What a true servant is like by modeling servant leadership. And if Christ said he does one thing, we will build servant leaders to impact the kingdom of God.